All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go through how to turn react.create class into ES6 classes. Um, so I'm going through and updating examples from my book, Pure React, and it's updating everything to work with React 15.5, which is deprecated create class. So now these examples, I'll get this console warning that says React create class is deprecated. So I'm just going through and updating everything, so I'm gonna show you how I do it. We're gonna skip over the simple components. Some of these, like this one, could just turn into a stateless function component. And I actually have another video that you can watch for how to deal with those ones. But we'll we'll look at the create class to ES6 class ones. So here's the first one. This one doesn't have any state, um, so it could turn directly into a stateless function component. But since it has this action handler, um, it'll be a little bit easier to translate if we go directly to a class. So this becomes, instead of var something equals react create class, we say class parent extends react dot component. And the syntax within the class change a little bit. So the functions become this simpler form here. You don't need the function keyword. You don't need the commas between the different properties. And this one, this function here does not depend on this at all. So we could just turn this into a function like this and it'll work perfectly fine. So you can see child says button was clicked. Okay, so that one's done. Let's move on to this one. Um, child has the same kind of setup. There's render and there's one uh, one kind of handler method, but this one does depend on this. It's going to be class child extends react dot component. And we can get rid of this line here. Get rid of the function. Comma. And because this one depends on this, we need to make this either make it an arrow function or we can bind it in the constructor. And I'm a fan of this, um, the arrow function method because it's just a little bit less code. And what this actually does is, uh, at the time the function is created, it binds this to the instance of the class. Um, so you don't have to bind it manually, you don't have to bind it in render. The reason this is necessary is because in ES5, the create class syntax, um, these would actually auto bind every property, all the function properties for you, um, but that's no longer true with ES6 classes. So we've got to do this. But with that out of the way, everything should still work. Great. All right, this one here has a little bit more going on. There's actually state here. So we'll start off the same as the other ones have. But we have initial state, so there's two ways to handle this. One way is to make a constructor. And it takes props, it calls super props. And then we can say this.state equals whatever initial state we want. And so we can copy and paste this right here. So that's one way to do it. And this works. Um, a different way to do it is to use a property initializer syntax, which is to just put state equals object directly in the uh, in the class definition itself and then we don't need the constructor so you can see it's like three lines or if you you know if it's really simple you can compress it to one line instead of this whole block of code so we'll do it this way because it's a little bit cleaner looking then we don't need get initial state anymore and handle action is the same kind of thing as before, so we'll just turn this into an arrow function. Because it uses this, we need to maintain the this binding. And then render clean up a couple more things. And everything still works. Cool. So none of the components here have prop types, but I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail about how we would handle that. In a ES5 component, you would have prop types as a as just another property on the class. You'd have prop types colon some object, right? 
And for ES6 classes, we can actually, there's two ways to do it. One is to do it inside the class and one is to do it outside the class. So you can put them at the bottom. And for this one, say, for instance, counting parent with reset, you can say that dot prop types equals zero object, right? So you can do it here. Alternatively, and this is the way I see a lot of people doing it, the way I usually do it myself is to put it inside the class as a static member. So you can say static prop types equals your prop types right here. And then it's just a little bit easier to read. You can read straight through the class and you know what the prop types are without having to go down all the way down to the bottom to figure out what the prop types are. And it keeps everything nice and contained. The other thing is um, is lifecycle methods, where and the conversion for those is really straightforward. If you have something like component did mount um, as a, if you had it as a function here, um, you would have had it like this. And to convert it to ES6 is what the editor did for me, which is just to. Uh, get rid of the function. Same kind of thing as render. So that's it. That's how to convert create class to ES6 classes. If you'd like to learn an automated way to do this using code mods, or you'd like to download the code from this video, uh, click the link in the description below to get to the associated blog post, and you can get those there. Cheers.